from the public and then from uh, the media. The first question by video is from Andrew from Durham. Good afternoon. The past 12 months have identified current and future mental health challenges and also an opportunity to improve. What will the government be doing around the current mental health challenges? How will they be approaching mental health and well-being for the future, especially mental health and well-being in young children in schools? Thank you. Well, Andrew, it's a very pertinent question because it's an incredibly important challenge. And it's clear that the measures that we've had to take in the last year and the lockdown have had a significant effect on some people. And we make, need to make sure that we respond to that and support our mental health professionals who've been working incredibly hard. And I would say that the response is in three parts. The first is to support those who are currently working very hard to deliver mental health services. And in particular, we've seen a rise in uh, presentations of serious mental ill health and making sure that our, our mental health teams have the support to respond to those cases in a timely fashion is incredibly important. The second has been to expand the number of people who can get access to mental health services to support those uh, who may have a, a challenge with their mental health, which can be addressed uh, through services like uh, talking therapies, so-called IAP therapies, and other online services, which we've expanded massively during the pandemic. And the third is something that we've announced further funding to today, an extra 79 million to support children and young people's mental health, especially as they go back to school. And this will be linked support workers who link schools with local mental health services. Because it's not just about the serious mental ill health, although that is obviously absolutely critical. It's about making sure that everybody gets the support to strengthen their mental health. And this is something everybody can do in the same way that you know, even fit and healthy people go out to strengthen their physical health. You know, I was out running in the park this morning. Everybody can take steps to support their mental health and to make sure that your mental health stays strong. And this, there's a range of tools available from the Every Mind Matters tool, which Public Health England have developed, which is excellent, uh, all the way through to the array of NHS mental health services that are available. And we've put in the extra money to make sure that there is that link between children and young people who have challenges with their mental health, who present at school, making sure they can then get access to services so that services are accessible to them. So thank you very much for the question, very timely, and um, I, I hope that I've given a full answer. The next question is from Hannah from Cornwall. In order to allow shielding teenagers the chance to return to school with their peers, has the government considered widening the criteria for which under-16s are eligible for the vaccine? Uh, thank you very much, Hannah. I'm going to ask Dr Hopkins to set out more details. Uh, because it, the clinical details are what matters here. But, it, but if a, a child's clinician judges that because of their condition, it is appropriate for them to get, them to get the vaccine, that is allowed within the rules. Um, and um, that is, but it has to be down to the judgment of an individual uh, clinician. Yes. So just, just to add, so JCVI, as you know, have recommended that 16 to 18 year olds who are in the clinically extremely vulnerable group can be offered the vaccine. And um, I, in groups under that age group, it really is a decision for the general practitioner or the specialist in charge of that child's care. Uh, we have very little data for children yet, and further data will come through uh, from both studies in children and uh, our monitoring process for any child who's given a vaccine. But this really is an important decision that needs to be driven by the, the experts involved in the child's care. Thanks, Hannah. That's a very important question. Uh, and the critical thing is it is allowed uh, where the child's clinician thinks it's in their best interests. Um, the next question